Segment two, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Dial us up on the web, www.ntnm.org, the gateway to YouTube, where over 130,000 of you have watched shows. Community policing, we're big on that. Nothing like meeting the policemen who patrol your street face-to-face, -face, talking to them, letting them get to know you, you getting to know them. Um, it'll help make your neighborhood safer, and you won't have to listen to silly rumors. Um, and it's not just silly rumors. Some of these rumors are very destructive and dangerous and not good for the health of the neighborhood. Uh, we have now, we, this, this particular show, um, you know, there, there are Republicans in Cook County, and in Memphis, as long as I mention Republicans, there's also Jewish Republicans in Cook County. And, and I do want to give my condolences to Michael Menes, who lost his brother. We're going to be uh, out filming at the Republican, at the um, Greater Chicago Jewish Fest, where actually the Republicans are very well represented, and there aren't that many Democrats, believe it or I'll not. I'll be there. I'll be there. And uh, our next guest will be there, and we're talking, and this is the first time he's on the show. And he's somebody who's, who he has been a former member of the state legislature. I'm going to let you let him tell him. I'll let him talk. Roger <laughs> Keats, a Republican candidate for Cook County, for president of the Cook County Board. How you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Glad to be here. And you're saying background. I spent 16 years in the legislature with a state senator, a retired Army lieutenant colonel, businessman, lived in Illinois basically all my life. And originally from Evanston. Hyde Park and then Evanston. We started out in Hyde Park, hmm. then moved to Evanston, and, and I'm a graduate of Evanston High School, Michigan, bachelor, University of Illinois, master's. Very good. So, yeah, we're seen in Evanston, so we have to mention that. Right, right, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. In any event, so, okay, you're, you're running. You were, you were out of politics for a while. I was. I served 16 years as in Springfield, and you just reach a point of finally saying enough's enough. You know, and, and, and as a businessman, I was more than willing to move on. You know, these people who want to spend their entire life in public office, I've never been able to follow the logic of that. Uh, my ego never acquired that. And secondarily, I think it's important that you know what's going on, private sector, public sector, et cetera. And I think it's important that people should move in and out. I'm a strong supporter of term limits, et cetera. It's now, well, right now, I'm, I was never in favor of that until I've seen what's going on in Springfield. And, I didn't uh, <laughs> used to be either, but now I've... How can anyone defend what's happening in Springfield or Cook County? I mean, Illinois and Cook County are a tragedy. I mean, you're talking about we are number one in bonded indebtedness. We are number one in unfunded pension liabilities, number one in systemic budget deficit, number 50 in fiscal policy, number 49 in economic growth. And, and we reelect these same people. There should be consequences. People have a right to say accountability. These people should be held accountable for what they've done to our state. And, and I think that's important. And you look at Cook County. I mean, Cook County is a dysfunctional 19th century relic. No one has looked at the, at the structure of Cook County in at least half a century, maybe longer. We can't really find the last time anyone looked at the structure of Cook County. And a progressive Democrat named Mike Quigley came up with some ideas on how to restructure Cook County. And to me, that's a very important part of this race because if you're going to leave the status quo, you might as well have another insider, 20-year incumbent alderman like my opponent, take over. Because if you want the status quo, that's the status quo. But if you want the status quo, that means your kids aren't going to have jobs, the tax base will continue to shrink, and our future will still be even more diminished. Yeah, she's, uh, well, you know what, you're, you're the other guy, but she's already going back on her uh, tax rollback. <laughs> Did anyone seriously think a 20-year incumbent alderman, ward committeeman, political insider, supporter of the pay-to-play twins, both of them, that she really was going to cut taxes. Did anyone really believe that? So, okay, you're, you're elected. Are we going to cut taxes? <laughs> definitely, definitely. But I want to please put it in a bigger perspective. As I said, Cook County is a 19th century dysfunctional relic. We have three massive problems. Um, our taxes are too high. Our regulations are irrational. And we are the most corrupt county in the country and the most corrupt state in the country. The reason private sector jobs are flooding out of here is because no one's trying to cut those taxes. I'm going to do that. I will change the regulatory attitude of this county. And from a corruption point of view, after I fire 150 of the existing Todd Strozier political people, I'm going to replace them with at least 25 new inspector generals, and we're going after every ounce of corruption we can find. But the issue, well, it's those three, those are symptoms. Um, our real problem is lack of private sector economic growth. If we do not do something about the the, the job potential, the job climate in Cook County and in Illinois, we're just taking the up elevator on the Titanic. 
Something has to be done. The symptoms of all the shortages for cash and, and all the problems we're having, not funding the university, state not paying us bills, the county's pension funds being bankrupt, those are symptoms. The problem is we do not have enough private sector taxpayers. And one of our problems is true at the city, the county, the state. The governmental bureaucrats make more money than the private sector um, taxpayers by about 20 percent, have dramatically better benefits, and have pensions that are two to three times as large, and you can often retire at age 55, where a private sector person can't retire until 65 or 67. We have to deal with these inequities. Is it fair to say to the hard push, and Terry O'Brien talked about that, the hard push, hard stress taxpayers of Cook County and Illinois, you can't retire until you're 67, but you're going to subsidize the pension of someone who can retire at 55 who makes more money than you do and has more benefits than you. Is that fair? I don't think it is. No, of course not. And the, not to mention that, you know, if, if you accidentally get a job for, for, let's say, less than a month like a certain state senator, Carol Ronan, did uh, from a certain governor, Rod Bogoyevich, um, your pension all of a sudden becomes this more than two and a half times for 28 days worth of work. The <laughs> former president of the county board for a couple of months did the same thing, uh, Commissioner Steele. Right, Bobby Steele, yeah, that's and, right. And, and I, I find it from an ethical point of view, how do you sleep at night doing this stuff? How do you sleep at night getting pensions for salaries you never earned? You know, how do you retire with these pensions that are just so much more than the people who are paying the taxes? But again, those are symptoms. The, the, all these little problems we're having, all these things we can't afford to pay for, but those same people ripping us off are the very insiders who are becoming multimillionaires in the system themselves. No one is more obvious than the pay-to-play pins pl twins, Speaker of the House Michael Madigan. He makes millions of dollars a year while he shifts the property taxes from corporate taxpayers to the hard-pressed homeowners. And as people are losing their homes, their property taxes are going up because of Michael Madigan's influence, who's the state chairman of the Democrat Party. And then you've got Joe Berrios, the county chairman, who's the one who helps him do it. I don't want to get into the partisan side of it. I don't run as a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a problem solver. You look at my track record when I was in the legislature. When Harold Washington and I cleaned up the RTA, and for 20 years the RTA worked just fine in the 80s and 90s until Rod Blagojevich came in and made a mess. When we found the ghost payrollers in Springfield and the legislative leadership on both sides and the governor didn't want to deal with it, I went to Dick Kay, a legendary newsman, and Dick Kay and I cleaned that situation up. Or when we found Operation Greylord, where we sent 100-some people to jail, judges, etc., and no one wanted to touch it because those are the big influential guys in the Black Caucus and Miguel Devalier and I went after those guys and we cleaned the thing up. And, and in every one of those cases, the legislative leadership of both parties fought us initially. Two of the cases, the governor fought us. And yet we got it done anyway. That's what a competent public service get, servant gets done. Now I got the scars all over my body to prove I did that stuff. And that's why when people call themselves reformers, I get a little hostile on the subject. Take a look at what I've done. Take a look at these other people who call themselves reformers haven't done. Very good. Um, so, okay, now, you've got, a, you've got an uphill battle. There's more Democrats around here than there are Republicans. <laughs> there are, but the issue's not Republican and Democrat. I said, I'm running as a problem solver. Just yesterday I had lunch with uh, Senator slash Reverend James Meeks. You know, here's a guy, this is the kind of person, yeah, on paper he's a Democrat, he ran as an independent, but there have to be more people like us, like Meeks, like me, and so many others who have said, you know what, it is not partisanship. We've got a mess. We're inheriting a mess. We are attempting to fix this mess that we did not make. So I'm saying to you, I'm available. Look at my track record. Look at what I have accomplished over the years. Bipartisan, multiracial, reform, taking on the group, being legitimately independent of both parties. If that's what you're looking for, I'm available. If you just want another machine insider, don't vote for me. I'm not a machine insider. I promise you, I'll change things. By the way, I actually did like what Meeks wanted to do with the school vouchers. I'm, I'm a big fan of school vouchers. I had school voucher bills when I was there myself. Came within two votes of passing them. Wow. It, it would be such a benefit to both public and private. It's not even funny. I mean, how does, for a minute, what, are we still on the camera? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I mean, how does an inner city kid get ahead in life without a decent education? You've already got a couple strikes against you because of the, the background and the crime and all the things you've had to deal with as a kid and now you can't even get an education. That is institutional racism. And when I look at the fact that three quarters of the Democrats voted against the bill to help these kids in Chicago, the only reason that bill passed the Senate was Republican votes, and the only thing that made it 
almost passed the House with Republican votes. It's not a partisan issue. These are kids who live in the city of Chicago who are stuck in one of the two or three worst school systems in America. Sometimes leave the fact that you got these interest groups paying for your campaigns behind and say, my first obligation to these kids is they haven't got a prayer unless I reach out and help them. Yeah, that's true. It's definitely the teacher's union. But you know what? Let's give your contact information because we oh. are running out of time. <laughs> Roger Keats. You can find me at keatsforcook.org, www.keatsforcook.org. Or if you want to email me sometime, just keatsforcook at gmail.com, and I'd love to hear from you. Okay, and uh, in the meantime, the campaign is definitely underway. We want to wish you luck, and, um, you know, uh, you know, we, we will be inviting you back, and uh, we hope to see you on the campaign trail as it exists. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank my entire tactical crew, Sonny Hirsch. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye.